Today we're going to go through an introduction to React.js. Now what is React? React is a single page application library that was developed by Facebook. It is similar to Angular and it's pretty popular. The easiest way to get started is to use create React app tool. Let's get started. So I'm going to go into a DOS prompt. We'll type in this command npx create React app and we're going to call our application Toonland and it's going to use NPM. So once this command has executed successfully, it's going to create a folder called Toonland. So we're going to go into that folder and type in NPM start and it's going to start our React application. So let's do that. Okay, so now that it's done, we, so we'll go into that newly created directory and start the application will open up in a browser. So this is what it looks like. Let us look at the source code and try and understand what we've got here. So I'm going to open up this application in VS Code. And if you look at the directory structure here, of course, this folder node modules, it contains all the node libraries and there are tens of thousands of files. We're not going to concern ourselves with that. The most important folder is this one here, the SRC folder where your source files are. If you look at what we've got, this here is the main application, app.js. Let us modify this and make this application our own. Because I don't want to use the CSS file, I'm going to use Bootstrap instead. And we all know that if you want to use Bootstrap, you need also to have jQuery. Let's install the packages that we need for Bootstrap. So these are the commands that I'm going to use to install Bootstrap and jQuery and then this popper.js is used by Bootstrap so I decided to install that too. So I'm going to take the, all of these, copy them. What I can do is I can hit control backtack here to get a terminal window inside of my VS code and run these commands from in here. Now that we've installed these client-side libraries, let us modify our application. The intention of today's work is to do the following. We're going to go against a service at this location. If you point your browser to data.vncvr.ca slash API people, you'll get cartoon characters. Fred Flintstone, Barney Rubble, etc., etc. And among other things, we have here the last name, the first name, the occupation, the gender, picture, and at the very end, there's another column, which is the votes column. So these are the properties of each one of these items in our JSON. Not only do we want to display it, we want to be able to add, update, and delete the data. Before we go against an online service, we're going to copy this JSON array and put it in our local application, get it to work, and then we'll point to this URL. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we're going to create a folder under source SRC for our pages. So I'm creating a new folder here called pages. And it's really typical when you work with JavaScript, you might as well keep everything lowercase, at least the folder names. In here, I'm going to create a new file for my home page, and I'm just going to call it homepage.js. And for my homepage.js, I'm going to put the boilerplate code for React. And that boilerplate code looks like this. It's got this fragment section defined by react fragment tag and in there you ha you can put your html but beware your html has to be well formed and has to follow the xml rules if you have a tag that's not closed or if you have an, an empty element tag that's not properly closed this will fail so this is our home page now if we want to display our home page we need to reference it in the app.js. And remember, this is component technology. This here is the first component we've created. 
If we want to use this in our app.js, what you do is you have to import it first. So you have to go import pages. That's where it is. And we have a page called home page. Once you've imported it, you can actually use it here. Now I don't need this logo, so I'm going to delete it. And I don't need the app.css file, I'll delete that too. I can get rid of all the section here, this whole div section, and I'm going to replace it with my own. In here, I'm going to add the following. I'll add a new div. And in here, I can use my home page tag, which I just created. That's the component that I created. I can type in home page and close it. And notice that we have to close it. Otherwise, it will complain. In React, if you want to use Bootstrap, typically you type in class equals to container. This is normally the main class that everything else is contained inside. In React, you cannot say class. What you do is you say class name. Now, this will not work because we need to import our Bootstrap libraries and we need to import our jQuery libraries and so on and so forth. So for that, we will add a couple of import statements. So over here, I'll be importing the Bootstrap CSS, the jQuery min, the popper min, and the Bootstrap min.j. At this point, I should be able to run my application and see what it looks like. So go back to your app and there you go. You don't even need to refresh your application. It immediately knows to update itself. So this is what I entered here for my home page. The next thing we want to do is start using React routing. And what does routing mean? It is defining the pages that you're going to have within your application and how you can get to them. That is the routing. So to use a routing, we need to import certain libraries and the libraries we need to import are the following before we can use the routing we need to install this package so let's go back into this terminal here and install this package and this package provides us with the routing libraries that we need once you've done that we can import these two classes here the browser router and the route objects we can then surround our home page tag with a router object and take this, cut it, and put it in here. But this is not really a proper route. So instead of that, what you do is use a route in here, a route tag. and the path will point to the root and the component that it's going to be using is the home page component. And we can put the word exact here to indicate that this route has to be the front slash only and nothing else. So if you save this and go back to your page, you'll find out that it's still working. Nothing has changed. We just used a route instead of just using the component tag. Let us add some more pages. I'm going to add an about page, a detail page, and a list page. So going back into VS Code, in our pages folder, I'm going to add three more files. The first one, I'll call it the about page .js. The second one, I'll call it the tune list page for listing my cartoon characters. And the third one, I'll call it the tune detail page. Now, for my about page, 
I'm going to add some boilerplate code. This is the contents of my about page and it's very similar to what we saw before. Here you just import react and you are going to return this fragment and it's just going to display Toonland. I'm going to add the word about here. We can close this and let's do for the next one the list page. This is what my list page is going to look like. And again, boilerplate code. Now, one of the shortcuts that we can use in React, instead of having this react.fragment, you can shorten it by doing something like this. And it means the same thing. My third page is the detail page. And this is what it looks like. Again, this is boilerplate code. Now, let us create routes for all of these three new pages that we created. Let's put that in our app.js. So in my app.js, I need to import all of these pages. So I'm going to do an import here for my about page from pages about page. And the same thing, I'll do an import for my tune list page from pages tune list page. And finally, there's one more, and that is my detail page. Just as we did here for the home page, I'll add more routes for these other pages that I created. So I'll copy these and I'm going to add these other components to these ones. I've got my about page. I have my tune list page here and I have my tune detail page. Now for my about page, I'm going to use a route slash about. And for my tune list page, I'll use a route slash list. And for my tune detail page, I'll use a route detail. Let's go back to our application and see if we can access these endpoints. So I'm going to go in here, go back to my main page and type in, for example, about. And it will take me to my about page. If I go up here and I change that to list, it will take me to my list page. If I go back here and finally go to my detail page, it will take me to my detail page. Of course, it doesn't make sense that we have to go to the URL line and enter all these routes. Wouldn't it be nicer if we have a menu system so that we can click on something and it takes us where we want to go? So we're going to use Bootstrap to give us a top menu system. To do that, we're going to create a new component, which we will call the nav bar. So let's go into our application and under source, I'm going to create a new folder and I'll call it components. And in this components folder, I'll add a new file and I shall call it nav bar. And in my nav bar, I will add the following code. Now, this code is very similar to what we've done before, but we need to import this React Route DOM class because this provides us with an object called link. And link is a way inside React to produce anchors. All of this code is standard bootstrap code that produces a navigation horizontal top menu bar. Here we have some links. We have an unordered list and three links here in line items. The first link would point to slash and it would take you to home. The next link points to about and it would take you to about. And the third link points to slash list and it would take you to the tunes list. So this is what our navbar is. Let us 
put our navbar into our app.js file, which is the main file. To do that, let's go to app.js, and we need to import our new component into here. We call it the navbar, and we have to get it from, it would be in the components folder, and it is our navbar. Once we've imported it, all we have to do is place it in this position. And let's go and see what our page looks like. It has an error. The reason we have this error is because we need to put our navbar inside of the route. So I can go back in here, take this, and move it inside of the router tag. And by doing that, we should see that our application is working. Now you can see that all the links are working. There's one link that we didn't use yet, and that's the detail link. And the detail link is typically used for passing arguments. So on my main menu here, I'm going to add this. And what this means is that in order to get to my detail, I would typically pass an ID. So let me go to my detail page and capture that ID just to prove that I'm able to get access to the ID. So if you go to the detail page, we can pass what we call props in this position in our component. And the props that we're going to pass, we'll call it match. And if I want to get a handle to that ID, I can say here, I'll create a variable called ID, and its value is going to come from match dot params dot ID. Now, we have an error here. And the error is because the boilerplate that we're using it doesn't lend itself very well to handling business logic and UI. Now to fix that, what you would normally do is take this bracket out of here, put it here, and type in return to this one. And then put all of this in a brace. If you do that, then you can say that all the business logic goes here, and all the UI goes here. And this is the way that our component encapsulates both the UI and the business logic. If I want to put a comment inside of this section, which is regarded as the UI, you can't do that in the average HTML way of doing things. This doesn't work. If you want to add a comment here, the way to do it is as follows. You do a curly brace like that, and This is the way you add a comment inside of this UI section. I don't want to add a comment, so I'm going to take this out. This is for your own curiosity. Now that I have access to this ID, let's say I want to display it in my fragment. So I can say the ID was red. So now let's go back and see if our application is working. It's still working. We haven't broken anything. So now if I go to my URL and type in detail slash or 88, you see I passed 88 and 88 was read in my component. So I was able to pass a parameter to the component. So we've done our UI, we know how pages work, we know how components work. Let us now start using data. So I did mention to you that we want to use this data here. So we're gonna take this array 
and put it into a JavaScript <coughs> file so that we can read it locally just to continue building our application. Once we have it working with local data, then we will flip the data so that it goes and reads real data from the API that's online. Let's go back in here and under our pages, I'm going to create a new JavaScript file which I shall call tunes.js. And in this tunes.js, I'm going to put some static data. This is data that I scraped from my endpoint. What I did was I created a constant variable here that contains that array of cartoon characters and I just exported it. So now I shall use this data in my application. So to use the data in my application, I'm going to go to my detail page and import my data. So I'm going to go import tunes from tunes. And instead of just displaying just the ID without much information, I'm going to use the ID that's passed to this component in order to grab one of the cartoon characters with their appropriate ID. So if I enter ID 3, I want to grab Betty Rubble. If I enter ID 8, I want to grab Mickey Mouse. So I'm going to take this code and put it here. And what this does is it loads the tunes array of JSON objects and it finds the cartoon character whose ID equals to the ID that's being passed here. And it returns an object called person. If the person is null, then we should display person does not exist. Otherwise, I'm going to display some detail here about that particular character. And the UI that I want to use is essentially a table. It's going to look like this. I have first an H4 tag where I'm displaying the person ID, the first name, and the last name. And then I have a table here with two cells. In the first cell, I'm going to display an image. And in the second cell, I'm going to display the occupation and the gender. So let us go back and check our application. Here we are. Everything works like before. Let's just check that we can display something if we go to detail. And here you go. This seems to be working. I'm getting my cartoon character, the name, the ID, the occupation, and so on and so forth. So let's try another one. Let's go for eight. And we have here, person does not exist because there is no eight. I think we stop at seven. So at seven, we have Donald Duck. So this seems to be working. We need to implement this tunes list. And the idea here is we want to display all the items of data that we have. And if we click on one, it will take us to the details page. That's the way this thing has to work. Now we know that our details page is working, but it doesn't make sense to, for us to go to the URL and always type in the, the, the details and the ID and so on. We want something that's more user friendly. So let's go to our list page here. Let us import our tunes array. Next is we need to get some code to read for us the data and display it. As we said before, a good way of creating these components is to return this and put everything into a brace, brace block. This is a better way so that we can divide the UI from the business logic. Okay, so under this here, why don't we display all the contents of this array? Let's get the code for that. This is one way of iterating through your collection. So you have here our tunes array. And for every item in that array, 
we're going to display the ID, the first name, and the last name. Let's see if this is going to work. So there we go. But of course, we want to click on this so that it takes us to the detail page. So we need to make these clickable. So if we want to make them clickable, we can change this code so that it uses link. So let's import link. So just like we did before, we would need to import the link object from React Router DOM. We can change this code to use link. And this is what it's going to look like. So for every item, we're going to display a link. Now, link requires you to enter this key so that each item is unique. So you just need to do this, otherwise it won't work. And for every item, you want to create a link to detail and you want it to have slash person ID. So now if we go back and look at this, all of these are clickable. And if we click on any one of these, it takes us to the detail page and it works as expected. Let us turn this logic here into a reusable component. Because it's very possible that we want to create this list of items that are clickable and reuse them in multiple places. And I'll tell you of an instance where we might want to do that. On the detail page here, we might want to put the same component down here. You can see all the other cartoon characters except the one that you're currently looking at. So this is an opportunity for us to create a reusable object. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll come into our components folder and I'm going to create a new file and I'll call that tune list. And in this tune list, I'll create the component for that. Now this component will look like this. We're going to again import tunes from here. We need link and that logic that we had in our list page, we're going to get rid of it. And basically we took this out of here and we put it in our tune lists, which is this logic here. Now, if we go back to our list page, we don't need to import any more link and tunes. We don't need to because all of that functionality is encapsulated in our tune list. This potentially means that now I can import this tune list, which is a new component, in my list page. This is where I want to import it. So I'm going to go in here and say import tune list from components slash tune list. And I can just add my tune list component right here. So now it's working. I have my list and this is using a component. Now let's go back to my tune list and look at the logic there. In my tune list here, I want to be able to filter out all the items in a list except something that happens to be current. So in my tunes list, I'm going to pass a parameter here, which is called a prop. And I'm going to call it accept ID. So display everything except a certain ID. And the logic for that will be as follows. I'm going to assign this tunes array to another variable that I'll call others. Now it's very possible that accept ID is comes in as undefined, as null. So if it is not undefined, I'm going to filter the exception, which is this accept ID. In fact, let us do this for the moment. So at this point, our applications should still be running. What I want to do here is instead of displaying tunes, I want to display the others. So this again, 
this needs to be replaced. So it's going through the others array. I go back here, refresh, it seems to be working. Now, the proof of this is to come to the detail page, and in the detail page, we want to add another cell here that displays the list except the one that happens to be on that page. So to do that, we need to import the tunes list here too. Components slash tune list. Over here, I'm going to add a new cell and put it here. And this cell is just going to display the tune list and have an accept ID because notice that we have a parameter here or a prop accept ID. So on this page, I want to set my accept ID to, the, to be the person ID. And let's see if that's going to work. So if I come here and I go to my list, we have now our list displaying here, but there's a problem. The problem is it shouldn't show me Barney because Barney's on the page here. And the problem for that is this. On the tune list page, let's determine what is the value of our accept ID. So the common way of debugging is to do a console.log and see what's the value of this thing. So if I do console.log and I type in here, for example, accept ID equals to space and maybe display the value of accept ID and then run this thing and see what the value is. So if I come here, hit F12 and come here and do this. So you see accept ID is an object. But, but we want a value inside of that object. So let's go and see if we, what we can do here. So if I come here and I say, okay, dot accept ID, we need the accept ID property in this accept ID object. Okay, so I think that's the solution. Let me just comment this out. Come back here and see if it's going to work. Close this. You can see now when I have Fred Flintstone, it drops from this list. The current user drops from the list. So this seems to be working. If I come to the URL here and I do a 99, it says person does not exist. I want to create a page not found kind of component because this kind of text, you may want to reuse it in multiple places, not only on this page. So let's create a page not found component and it would probably need to go under pages. So here I'll create a new file and I'll call it not found page. And in there, I'll add this code. And this is simply going to return a 404 page not found. If I want to use it on my detail list page, I'll have to import it. So over here, I can just say return this not found page. And if I try to test it out, here we go. This is the not found page that I'm using. There's another problem that we have. Suppose I come in here and I enter slash crap, for example. Where is it supposed to go? It just goes to the home page, which is not correct. Because we need to, it to go to the page not found. So this is where you use something called a route switch. So we go back to our app.js and over here we can import the switch. So we want to import switch from router DOM. And over here I'm going to put all of this in a switch statement. Switch. And down here, we will put a route for page not found. So we need to also import page not found here. Import 
not found page from pages not found page and over here I'm going to create another route which is going to be the catch-all route that if none of these routes are found then it's going to go to the page not found so I'm going to do route there's no need for a path here because it doesn't matter component equals to not found page okay so now let's see if this is going to fix the problem go back here I have an error and it says does not contain a default export imported as switch because I need to do this like this here because this is one component in that library let's go back in here and see if that's going to work now it works so if I come in here and I say slash crap it will go to the not found page so we have pretty much completed our application and it does what we want it to do the only problem is it's using local data we want it to go against real data out there so let us redirect all of our access to local data and point it to online data there are two objects that we need to cater to that are pretty important in react one of them is use state and use state allows you to maintain the state of your objects okay and the other one is use effect and use effect is used for processing any state information that you have let's go to our detail page and see how we can consume some of this real data so in our detail page I'm going to come here and import to these two objects so I'm going to go import use state and use effect from react now you might ask me okay we can import it also we're importing from react twice here if you want you can do this you can go comma here and do that and save yourself a line because it's going from the same package now having done that we can set the state of the properties that we want to set using this use state I'll do this here this is using use state and these are the properties that we want to set so we have these properties votes ID first name last name there's even occupation that is gender if you want to set the initial state of that this is where you set it and this object here we're going to call it tune info this is the setter for that so whichever object you have here you have to have argument here called set tune info and this will be used for setting this set of properties and use effect is where you're going to process some of the state now just for testing purposes I'm going to set the value of votes using the set tune info on votes to be a random number and the idea here is that we have these cartoon characters Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and so on and we might want to vote them to say I vote for Mickey Mouse so we're going to create some random votes and then later on we will actually create a button so that we can vote so down here I'm going to create a paragraph under the person and over here I'm going to say the current vote is so much so now if I come here and I refresh let, let's go to a detail page and you'll see something really really funny we're getting random numbers from 1 to 10 but it's just going crazy and the reason is this page is constantly being refreshed and we have to tell it so that it watches a certain thing and stops refreshing based on 
a, a certain property. And to fix that, you can come here in our use effect, which is over here, and I need to put an empty array here because there's another argument to this function that tells it when to stop updating. So if I come here, we'll see that it stopped at one. If I go to another cartoon character, it's still one. That's another problem because it's supposed to change whenever I go to another cartoon character. Each cartoon character has its own votes. Now, the way to fix that is to say, okay, I want you to update based on this ID number, which is this ID number. For every ID number, it should have a unique vote or refresh it based on the ID. So now if I go back here and I change, you see this changes appropriately. Now that we know how this use state and use effect works, let us fetch some real data from our endpoint. Inside of this section, this is where you would put the logic that operates on state. So instead of just creating random numbers as we're doing here, let us get some real data. So the way to get real data is to put this in here. Now this is using fetch. And fetch is used for accessing some HTTP endpoint. So the endpoint, as I showed you earlier on, it is this location here. We want to access the ID. So what we need to do here is type in dollar and in brackets ID. This is called string interpolation. And if you want to use string interpolation, you have to use the back tag. You cannot use the quotation or the single quotes. So now, you're making a request to this endpoint. It's going to return to your result. You're going to convert that result into a JSON object, and you're going to set this tune, set tune info, which is this here. This is the setter. You're going to pass it the body, and then it's going to populate these properties that we mentioned here. This is a function. We immediately call this function after we've declared it. What we need to check here is not person. What we need to check here is this new property called tune info. So I'm going to come here and change this to tune info because we're not using looking at person anymore. And all these properties here, we want them to be tune info, not person. And if I forget any of these, it will probably not work. And let's go up here and make sure that our tunes is commented out because we don't want it to go against this data source. We want it to go against an online data source. This one also we can comment it out because it's going to filter the data by going to the endpoint, not going through the array. Let's see if this is going to work. Here we go. Tunes list. This hasn't been converted, by the way. What has been converted is once we go into a detail page, this is actually coming from the real API data source. In our tunes list component, which is this one here, we want also to comment out this. And we want to use use state and use effect. So I'm going to copy those two from here, just so I don't have to type them all over again. Copy these and put them into my tune list because I need these here. And this one, others tune, I'm going to replace it with fetch. I'm going to comment this out and replace it with data coming from the proper endpoint. So if you look at this here, again, I have tune info and set tune info. And for use state, I don't need to put any properties here. Yeah, I just want to read the data. And here I'm doing a fetch 
for this endpoint, and I'm not passing ID and any ID because I want to get all the cartoon characters there. After I read the characters into a result object, I convert, convert that result object into JSON objects and set the tune info property here with the data in the body, and I immediately call that function. Over here, I'm replacing this comment, this thing that I commented out, others. So in fact, maybe I should bring this down here and compare it with what we had before. This was reading information from an array. Now, I'm going to read information from this tune info. Notice that this object, this tune info object, is different from an array. So I have to apply on it object values. I have to ch change the contents of this into values. And then I do a filter on it. So it does the same thing as this here. And if we run, it should be pulling up the data from the real source. So let's go here, do list, and you know, this is coming from the proper endpoint. I want to add some sort of a button here so that I can vote. And this will show us how do we post data to the server. So I need to create a new component for voting. Its only purpose is to have a button that when you click on it, increments a vote. Now, to facilitate the voting process, I created an endpoint that looks like this. On the server, there's an endpoint where you pass it an ID, slash vote, and if you hit that endpoint, it immediately increments the vote for that person. So that's the endpoint that I want to hit in order to increment the vote. Coming back here, we're going to create a new component and we're going to call it votes section. And in this vote section, I have some code for it. So this is my class vote section and it's going to take three props. It's going to take the ID, it's going to take the current number of votes, and it's going to get the set info. The endpoint, as I mentioned before, it is the ID slash vote, and it knows to increment it. So I'm going to call this fetch function, pass it this URL, and make a post request, and that's simply increments the vote. I'm going to take the body that's returned and set it to set to an info. Over here I have a button. When the button is clicked it's going to call this function vote tune. So it's only when you click that button will it increment the vote. And all of these are simply bootstrap CSS styles. And down here instead of the paragraph that I had in the detail page, I'm going to move it to here. So I'm going to go to the detail page before I forget, and I'll delete this here because we don't need this to be here anymore. What we're going to do here is we're going to add that vote section component right here. But before we add it, we need to import it. So I'm going to come here and import the votes section component from components slash vote section and then let's take this and add it as a component right here notice that this vote section it takes three props so we need to add these three props over here so the id prop is going to be simply the ID. And then the next one is votes. And that's going to be tune info dot votes. And finally, the third prop is set tune info. Is going to be set tune info itself. If we run this application, let's see what's going to happen. Here we have a vote. Okay, we can go to any of these items here 
and we click on vote. Let's click on add a vote. Notice that at the moment, the vote is zero, right? So if I say add a vote, it goes to one. And if I go to Mickey Mouse, I can also vote Mickey Mouse. Flintstone has 67 votes. Dino has nine votes and so on and so forth. So you can increment the votes by sending post messages to an endpoint in the API. The next thing I want to do is, how about we add data? Let's create a component which we will call add tune form and use that to add data. Under components, create a new component and call it add tune form. And add tune form will have a form tag. And if you look at this, this add tune form, it takes as a param set tune info. In here, we have set values for first name, last name, occupation, gender, picture URL, and votes. These are the things that we want to set their values for. And with using use state, you can set their default value. At first, we want first name to be blank. We want votes to be zero, etc., etc. And we have a function here called add tune. In order to add a tune, we need to hit the endpoint API people using the post method. And we're going to take the values for f first name, last name, occupation, gender, picture URL, and we're going to stringify them and put them into the body. We have to set a header with key content type and value application JSON. And this is our form. This is nothing but an HTML form. It has a heading called add tune character. And then each one of these are form groups which represent a combination of label and input. And this is the way that forms are rendered in Bootstrap. So we have an input field for first name, one for last name, one for occupation, gender, picture URL, and then at the bottom here, we have an add button. So if we want to display this, we need to import it and put it somewhere. So we can put it on the detail page or any page for that matter. It doesn't matter where you put it. But for the moment, I'm going to add it to the detail page. So let's go to the detail page and import this. So we're going to go import, add, tune form from and it's also in the same directory as the other components and then I'm just going to add it somewhere here I'll put it at the bottom so why not stick it in here add tune form let's see what props it takes it takes the set tune info prop. So we can say set tune info equals to set tune info. And let's see if this works. So here you go, you have a form here. Let's add data and see if it's going to work. So let's say I'm going to say your first name last name, occupation, gender, let's say male, and picture URL, I'm going to use this endpoint here to get for me a picture. So I know that there's an endpoint with pictures. And let me grab the picture of Pluto. And put it in here and add. You see, here is my first name, last name. And if I click on it, I get Pluto, which is this picture. The only thing that we haven't done is to update and delete, and I will leave that to you. This concludes my talk today. Thank you so much.